We are the Woody Show. Hey. Yeah. And uh, we are your hosts for Alter Ego, which is coming up in January. And there's a lot of great bands that are on this lineup. Uh, would you like me to tell you about some of the bands who are going to be there? Please. Sure. Yes. All Please. right. Well, you got Paramore. You got mm-hmm. the 1975. You got the Black Keys. You got 30 Seconds to Mars. Bush. You got Yellow Card. Mm-hmm. Lovely the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rabies new favorite band. I know. Uh, last dinner party. The a lot of people talking party, about they them. Rule. And there's another band that's on this lineup. Uh, they're named Sum 41. Right. They go by the name Rip. Sum 41. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys have heard of them, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, the lead singer of that band, he's here. No. What? Yeah. In fact, he's in studio right oh now. Oh my god. Everybody, it's Derek from Sum 41. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I was trying to think of uh, ways mm-hmm. to, you know, bring the intro really to uh, to an excitement, like a peak. To, of people to like, like, oh my crescendo. God. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. What's that going was on? Good. Welcome you. Dude, you look great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You, look, you look very healthy. I feel and, good. Uh, you feel good? Yeah, I feel great. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. thank you for being here. Thank you for playing Alter Ego. Yeah, thanks uh, for having us. Crazy, uh, crazy great lineup. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah, I mean, I know that... Uh, it may not be a big deal to uh, to bands when you get on some of these festivals. Like you guys just played when we were young. And... Oh, I think it is. I mean, it yeah. is for us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited to play. Yeah. It's like if I'm in a group of like a bunch of other radio people, like Anna, I, it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> so a bunch of other people do what you do. And you see some people, you know, and friends like that. But yeah, for yeah. the fans, man, this is really cool that uh, we get all you guys all on the same uh, on the same stage. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. And a uh, couple things real quick. Uh, the new album is going to be out early next year. Two part album. Heaven and Hell, yes, which uh, we'll talk about here in a minute. But the the bigger story, obviously, is about how. And for the longest time, I kept calling it like you're going to go on this indefinite hiatus. <laughs> but it's a disbanding. That's the yeah, word I yeah. keep seeing, disbanding. So this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a hiatus. Um, yeah. It just yeah, it got to a point where I felt like, for myself, I mean, I've been in this band since I was 15, you know, yeah. 10th grade, and that's all I've ever done. That's all I've ever thought about. Every single day, I wake up. Some 41 is the only thing I think about and work on every day, yeah. all day. And it just got to a point where I'm like, is that all I got? Can I think of something else? Like, I'd rather try something than just kind of do the same old thing, especially if I feel like, you know, I love the work and I, I'm excited about the band, but if that excitement starts to wane in a couple of years, I, I don't want to, like, be dragging the band out there and not giving it 110% every yeah. night. So is it, is it about uh, music? Like, no. are you kind of like, you still want to do something with music or do you want to change up all together? Like, yeah. I mean, I love music. Um, yeah, but obviously, I, I don't, but... <laughs> I don't know what it is I want to do yet because I can't think of anything else. Is this a midlife crisis? Mm. It's very possible. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so many yeah. people, like you got all these bands out there, man, they're grinding and whatever. And they would, you know, they're thinking about, Oh my God, if I'm in that position, if I'm a band is successful playing mm-hmm. you know, big venues, all these hits that people know and love, like some 41, like, man, why would you ever give that up but at the same time it's i think it's really cool that you can get to that place there's a friend of mine that uh that quit a really great job that he had and he just wanted like he he didn't know exactly what he wanted he just knew that he wanted something else yeah that's kind of where i'm at and i won't really know what that is until this is kind of out of my life yeah and he's in a great place now okay and it's well, like man he's so he's so happy that uh that he went and he did that yeah yeah is it true that you've never been on a vacation that is true yeah ever no Never. Damn. How? And why? <laughs> and why? Yeah, how and why? <laughs> because didn't you like perform almost three hundred times? Yeah, I mean per the, year. The way. The, the but even s- as a kid, though, like. Uh, oh, as a kid, no. You never Definitely. went on vacations, no. and. Mm-hmm. No, I mean I grew up with a single teenage mother on welfare, so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we been didn't there. take vacations really. Um, but no. Uh, th- with the band, I mean, we just—it's just we're always working. You right. Know? It's like when the tour ends. That usually means that's. The next day, I start writing songs for the next record, and then that takes me. Not right even a week. To, no, I usually start right away. I mean, there's never a time. It's a, yeah. you know, especially in the early days. Well, no wonder he's ready to retire. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I mean, been married. This is your second marriage now. Like, yeah. no honeymoon even. Like, no. There's, like, wow. wow. How'd honeymoon. you get away with that? <laughs> I don't think I would have been able to like uh, pull that off. Every year, yeah. my wife and I say we're going to take the honeymoon mm-hmm. this, this yeah. summer, and it just never happens. Wow. But does it feel like work? Because uh, you've been in the band since you were about 15. Yeah. And never really had a nine to five or an office job or something like that. So does it ever feel like work to you? It doesn't feel like a job, but it yeah. feels like a lot of work. Okay, but that I love I love the work. You know, yeah. um, what's your favorite part? Being on stage. Yeah, you know? like for me, like doing the show is the most fun. Yeah, yeah. The preparation, which I guess for you would be the. I mean, songwriting has got to be as a musician. That's got to be fun. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I've don't. never cared for writing songs. I like having the songs once I've written them. Yeah. But the process has never been that enjoyable to me. I mean, maybe. In the past few years, I've probably found a better way to get around it. In the early days, 
like I said, we were always just putting, we put our first four records out in four years. So there was never any time. There was always so much pressure. And it was just a small window of time that I was given to write songs for another record. Yeah. Now I don't really do that schedule anymore. I can't, I write when I feel like it rather than here's your six week block and we need a record done. You know. Mm-hmm. So when you're doing this, like, do you have like a set schedule? Like, do you set your alarm like the night before? Like, oh, going to get up tomorrow yeah, morning, going to write some, some songs writing. or going to no. do like some uh, mixing on the album mm-hmm. or. You know, got to talk about a marketing plan with these guys or whatever. Just, you just wake up when you wake up and your day no, is just kind of free form like that because that rules. I mean, there's, <laughs> I, I, I sort of do the creative part whenever I feel like it, um, but there's always work going on with the band. You know, running the whole thing, that's every yeah, day, yeah. day. Yeah, I don't think people, a lot of people don't think like um, you're as involved as you are. Probably not. Yeah, I mean, people every think, little aspect of it. Everything. Yeah, yeah. You have to be. I mean, it, it's there's so I mean, many some people, people involved. Some people don't like. They get to a certain point. They go, all right. Like you're not carrying your gear anymore. You're not uh, <laughs> yeah. traveling around in a van anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you get to a certain point, maybe you you uh, you let some things go. But you're still doing all the, I mean, not of the gear, but the the heavy lifting of the business of the band. Yeah, it's it's basically like running a small business. Is the way I look at it. Yeah, you know? oh, but it is a business. Yeah. It's totally a business. And now you're going out of business. <laughs> <laughs> out of business. Yeah, yeah, this is like one of those uh, clear... Are you going to sell yeah, right. like... Uh, uh, yeah, you could sell everything. Yeah. Are you going to sell yeah. everything off and... Uh, I haven't thought that far, but... Yeah, yeah like maybe. a 50% off sale, <laughs> and then like maybe a week later, it's 75% off. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like selling the shelves and stuff. It's kind of like what Spirit Halloween does when sure. they ramp down or whatever. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, Derek Wibley from Sum 41 is here. They're playing uh, Alter Ego, two-part album. It's coming out next year. It's called Heaven and Hell. So tell us a little bit about that. So you know going into this that it gets planned, this is going to be your final? I didn't know that. You didn't? No. No, the oh, idea okay. came after the album was finished. So yeah. you hated it that much? You hated <laughs> the process that much? You're like, you know what? Forget uh, you know it. This what? Is I'm it. over this. I'm done. Yeah. I actually felt like once this record was finished, I sat back and listened to it, and I thought, I was really proud of it, and I yeah. thought, this, this might be the best idea and the best record we've ever made, because it's a double record, Heaven and Hell, but the Heaven side is 10 songs of like old school sort of pop punk Sum 41 style. Yeah. And the hell side is sort of the last 15, 16 years of Sum 41, which has been much heavier. So, and that's another 10 songs. And I don't sit in every record that comes out, I say, this is our best record. But when I listened to this one, I was like, I really believe this is the best thing we've ever done. And I was already having thoughts of like, how long do I want to do this? Is there something else I'd like to do? And then it just kind of hit me of like, this should be the last record. And let's just do one huh. last tour. And then I, I got to think about focusing some energy somewhere else. I mean, is there anything that you did with the album or that you're doing on the tour that you've always wanted to do? Like with that mindset of like, all right, this is uh, this is it. I mean, we're going to, the tour is being put together. So I don't know what we're going to do on this tour yet. I know we want to. Even these it. shows that you're playing now, like the When We Were Young or, mm-hmm. you know, Alter Ego coming up. I mean, are you, are you like, you know, F it. We're going to play this song. Like sometimes like bands will leave a. You know, for whatever reason, they leave these songs off of like the uh, the regular set list. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you know what? We're going to play this song. We're going out. We're going to play this song one more time. And I don't think we do that stuff at festivals necessarily, maybe at our own shows, like on right. the next tour. But um, usually we just try to put on the best show we can and play songs that people are going to know. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you I mean, you like to um, uh, do, I'm sure... I'm, you have to have like some kind of hot, because I mean, I'm just thinking like you're a young guy. You're what, 43? I'm doing the math. You're 40, 43. Three? Okay. Yeah. So you're a young guy. What are you going to, I mean, you want to do something else, but now are you going to take that time? Are you going to do that honeymoon? Are you going to like, are you going to try to- I think the to... first thing I'm going to have to do, whether I want to or not, is take my wife on a honeymoon. Take my wife on a honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It would be my I first think... vacation. And no, dude, you're going to love I it. I want to. I definitely want to. <laughs> you're going to love it. Man. But yeah. do you have, I mean, outside of uh, of music, because I'm, I'm a person, I struggle with this question. People go, what are your hobbies? I mean, do you have other interests or things that you get in? Because I can relate to you when you say that you th- you're you thinking about that band. You're thinking about yeah. Sum 41 all the time. I'm always thinking about this stupid show. Yeah. And it just consumes me. Yeah. And I become a very one-dimensional person where I don't have yep. these hobbies. I think about, man, what would I do if all of a sudden like, this was gone? What like who am I? What would I do? Do you have hobbies? Do you like uh, golfing? Like what? No. Do you, like what are you gonna do with all this time? No, no, I'm the same as you. I, I all I think about is this, and I feel like I'm very one dimensional, and um, I don't know what else I would do. I, I don't have any other hobbies, but I mean, you know, I have creative interests. Like I'll watch movies or a TV show and think I could have written something better than that, yeah. or mm-hmm. I could write something maybe that could be as good as that. So. I don't know if that's what I'll do, but yeah. um, I have had ideas for some of those kinds of things. Um, I'd really like to go on a solo acoustic tour. 
that's probably the easiest and most okay. obvious thing uh, to do next. Um, just because I've always wanted to do it and I've never done it. I'd like to do that first maybe. Um, but I don't know. I can't really decide what I'd like to do until I just burn the whole thing down and figure out what I'm going to build next. Right, like I'm thinking about yeah. taking flying lessons. Maybe we can get a right. work deal or something. <laughs> do that. This yeah. is a take a bowling or something. Like a real yeah. general question: Artists in the past that have gone solo, mm -hmm. and then they go on the road, and then they hire a band to play with them. <laughs> yeah. I think, why did you go solo? You yeah. know, like I've never <laughs> understood yeah. that. Yeah. Well, that's probably because of you know band relationships are not great. Okay. Uh -huh. Um. Some bands are hard to be in. I mean, fortunately for us, we were all great friends, and mm -hmm. we started this band, you know, years after we already went to school together. You know, right. so we all knew each other, um, and we are still great friends. Okay. And everything's really great between us, which I think was a shock to the rest of the band when I brought this up to them. I it bet kinda, it, it was a bit of a punch. Yeah, were they pissed? Yeah. They weren't like, pissed. They were just blindsided. Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, everything's going great. You know, mm -hmm. every album and every tour we do it always just gets bigger the, the, the venues get bigger right and, mm -hmm. uh, we go to different countries we've never been like it the, it just kind of grows so they were shocked for sure are they okay with it now i mean have they yeah, embraced they the idea it. and yeah. like they're kind of thinking about like what they want to do or things that they want to get involved with i don't know you don't know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, are their funny. hobbies? What are their plans? Yeah. It's like if people say like, "Oh, what's Greg doing this way?" Like, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Jeez. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Now, when it's all wrapped up, do you want to stay home? Because you've probably been around the world, but I have uh, friends that are in bands, and they say when they are on tour, they never really get to experience anything. Yeah, because yeah, you're working. Yeah. It's like a business yeah. trip, yeah. right? Is there just destinations that you want to go to, or you just want to be home? I can't even count how many times I've been to Europe. But mm -hmm. I would love to go to Europe on vacation. Like a tour. Yeah. I've never got to see anything and just like go around and go to cool restaurants and see cool architecture and just yeah. You know, oh, that's things. right. You're. I did read. You're really mm -hmm. into architecture. Yeah, I am. See, maybe yeah. you could take some. I yeah, appreciate ever, it. I don't, I don't have a hobby with it. Yeah, though. I know. <laughs> right. But like, this could be something like um, you know, like there's all kinds of classes that you could take or classes, whatever. You can learn about architecture. Go or to like, all the Frank Lloyd Wright houses. You can start like designing stuff. You know what I mean? It's possible. It's. Creative. I mean, think about it. little John. He's got an HGTV show. That's little true. John. Yeah. What? Oh, right. like that guy. <laughs> he's got an HGTV show, and it's just something he likes on the side. And that kind of came from an offshoot of you know putting together a production yeah. for a show and designing a you know like a like didn't a, like, Vanilla Ice have one too? Yeah, yes. Vanilla Ice did too. Yeah, yeah the Vanilla yeah, Ice the project yeah. show. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like maybe you can do something with uh, with architecture. It's possible. Do you, you like never... HGTV? Do you watch any of that stuff? Uh, no, so not really. so you're more into like the fancy architecture. You're not into like. Uh, I, I live, laugh, love Are stuff. you handy? Like, can you can no, you fix stuff? No, no, you can't. No, no. yeah. <laughs> I wish I was too. No, I'm the worst. <laughs> Derek from Sum Forty One is here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, congratulations! Just got uh, caller ninety eight on the sold out tickets for Alter Ego, and it's meet and greet week. You probably didn't even realize this. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. You, know, you know what the uh, the the prize is? So you win tickets for Alter Ego today. Mm -hmm. And they also get to go backstage and meet you guys. I wow. did hear about that. Oh, okay. you didn't hear about yeah. that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. I was I, wondering I if they get yeah. told about that. Right. Do you agree or like, or like, like are they you? making you do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they kind of tell you what you're doing. Probably not at this point. Yeah. You probably have to say, yeah, we're yeah, willing to. Yeah, yeah, we're cool no. with meeting fans. Yeah, 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 we get asked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are people typically cool or is yeah, it for awkward, the most part. And, awkward and weird? Like, do you consider yourself to be like a uh, like a social guy, like more of like um, whether introverted or extrovert? Probably more introverted, introverted. And shy um, normally. Yeah, but uh, which is odd, being you know the front man, the yeah, yeah. lead yeah. singer of a band. I but I think that's usually how it goes. Yeah, you know most singers are uh, mm -hmm. introverted. Yeah, most comedians are like that's sad true. and damaged. Yeah. They right? save like, it for yeah, the stage. It's so weird. And then you wouldn't think, because oh, here's this happy, funny, you right. know, person, and they're you know. I so, don't know if you is that, is that we like save it. I think it's once you get up there and the music, it's the music brings it out of you. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Is fame trippy? <laughs> is fame trippy? <laughs> yeah, is it like tripped out? Yeah, man? what is it like? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've never really think about it. Really? Like that, I guess. Okay. Uh, is there like any kind of like weird, can you remember any kind of in particular, like really over the top kind of like weird interaction that you've I mean, had with a fan? There's some weird stuff. I know when uh, when I was married to Avril, she had some really weird fans, and there was some, you know, she had a lot of stalkers that uh, once mm -hmm. I was involved. Did you have to you kick know, any asses? Like, no, but there was, like, actually guys who were, like, you know, sending us death threats and stuff like that. Really? Wow. Jeez. There's one guy in particular that was kind of, you know, the FBI got involved. It was, like, a uh, more whoa. serious. So, wow. Um, you know, that's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that stuff. That's, <laughs> that's a trip. Yeah, I don't understand, like, if you like somebody... 
that you want to hurt them. Or, 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 or well, like, they want to hurt me them. because I was with her. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But How even still, like, you, you, hear, you hear about those uh, people. So yeah, fame's kind of trippy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds <laughs> trippy. Answer your question, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so where are you living these days? Where are you spending most of your time? Uh, Las Vegas. Oh, in Vegas. Yes. Nice. So many people have made the trip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the relocation to Vegas. Yeah, I was in L.A. for about 18 years. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, tell us why we should all move. Oh, Get out of here. I I, it, it was more of just almost kind of the same thing of like with the band for me of like wanting to try something different. Mm. Yeah. Just mm. The same mm. thing over and over again. I Maybe it's because I've been touring for so long and things are just different all the time. And like how, going, is life, how is life different in Vegas from, you know, from here? There's certain things that are, are very similar, um, but the, the things that are different are awesome. Like there's zero traffic. Right, mm, <laughs> yeah. and they think they have traffic. Yeah, that's yeah, almost the point. You oh, talk to anybody time. from Vegas, it's like, yeah, oh my like god, there's nothing. It's, yeah, there's right. no traffic. You can't call that traffic. Yeah, and then also just like uh, I think the ease of everything. Everything's right? easy. Yeah. yeah, you can get to a place. Parking's easy. Park, you said parking's yeah, easy. Real estate's easier. Yeah, everything's right. easy. Yeah, everything's easy. Do anything that you miss in particular about uh, SoCal? Uh, I mean, it's a lot of the same I, I'm stuff. I'm here all the time, yeah. so no, I don't miss anything because I kind of still yeah. I'm back and forth. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, like any one restaurant. I mean, that in and outs everywhere. Where they, I don't know if you're vegan or anything like that, but uh, you know, usually people have that one restaurant. Yeah, of that course, there's restaurants. So whenever, and, whenever and you get I'm back, back all the time. I went to you know one of my favorite restaurants last night. And, Which one? Uh, oh, I'm not gonna say it because then. Oh, <laughs> well, gets, oh it's man. a small yeah. hole in the wall. Ah, place. Uh, okay. Don't, don't what put kind it of on food? Yeah. It's sushi. Sushi. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There's enough places here. Nobody, you guys yeah, don't you need this it. one. Yeah. <laughs> this is mine. No, I'll tell you what, man. It would it would be hard to sway me off my favorite sushi place, which is uh, Kawami in Studio City. It's on Ventura. I know that one. Yeah, it's over mm-hmm. there's like a uh, Trader Joe's right down the street there. Uh, yeah. Kind of by what, what's the what's the name of that bar that we go to oh, every once in a while? The um, not the not the one up. Ah, uh, crap. But I think I, I bet the sushi place is the same one I go to. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Because you wouldn't even know it's there if you what blink. What is it? Laurel Tavern. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I know that place. Yeah. Yeah. What's yours? I'm not going to say because, oh, yeah. <laughs> because I think it might, keep be, a secret. it might be Derek's. Right. <laughs> and I'm going to be respectful of our guests. All right. All right. Well, you guys can uh, whisper about it when we, uh, when, we, when we get off the air. We talk here. off we, air. About yeah. It. All right. Well, keep listening because all day today you're winning sold out alter ego tickets so you can go see Derek and Sum 41 and all those great bands and go backstage and have a very nice, cordial, non-creepy, weird, <laughs> non-weird conversation <laughs> right. with the guys from Sum 41. Please. It is the Woody Show. Derek from Sum 41 is here. Yeah. Sum 41, of course, on the lineup for Alter Ego, along with Paramore, the 1975, The Black Keys, 30 Seconds to Mars, Bush, Yellow Card, Love of the Band, The Last Dinner Party. They're all going to be there. Uh, Sum 41 disbanding after this new album yeah. and their, uh, the tour that's going to next year. Uh, it's going to be a full year, international, go kind of everywhere, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a full tour. Yeah, go uh, go all out. And then eventually on a vacation. You should <laughs> yeah. use all these tour stops. Like Menace was kind of saying before the break, use these tour stops to start making lists of places you want to go and revisit. I've just already for got a list. Yeah. Recreational. Yeah. Wait, what is it, of all the stuff, because you, you know, talking about you've been in this band since you were 15, you said? Yeah. Like what's been the career highlight so far? Is there one I, particular moment? There's no one moment. I, I think looking, especially since, you know, we're coming to the end of it, I think I just look back at the whole thing of – I. The thing I'm happy the most about it is that it has been up and down because um, it, it feels really good to be at this place knowing how low things have been in the past, you know, and in how high things have been. It's just, it's been all over the place. Are you We've talking career wise, personal everything. wise, just everything. Everything, yeah. the whole thing. Did it go it, fast or slow? It goes fast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think that's the one thing you realize, especially if you talk to older people, how quickly just life goes fast. True. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Was winning a Kerrang award a highlight? It and was what, actually. And what is a Kerrang award? <laughs> yeah, Kerrang is a magazine in the UK. Oh, okay. Yeah. You haven't heard of that, Greg? It's a, I have not. Yeah, it's a rock mag. <laughs> yeah, come on, Greg. Yeah. I, but it's also like a radio station, a, a TV show. You know, it's pretty big. Over oh, there. that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then this is not a question. It's just I had promised I would uh, tell you something. I have a friend who's like my little sister. She said when you released Landmines, it tickled her little punk rock heart. And she said, thank you for that. Oh, cool. And awesome. then how long is this tour going to last, she wants to know? I think it's probably going to be at least a, probably a year. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's not like you'll be gone right, tomorrow. Right, like 10 yeah. more yeah. shows okay. and that's it. Yeah, yeah no, we're going to do the whole uh, worldwide tour, and that takes a little while. Awesome. I did remember something because uh, I thought about like the whole, like, what would I do if I wasn't working? I was asking yeah. Derek, like, all right, so once this is all wrapped up and, you know, some 41 is now done, you're thinking about the next thing. Are you just going to be kind of like hang in? Mm. Golf and watching TV or whatever, like, like retired people do. But you know, he's forty three. You know, I'm forty seven. I was reading about uh, Jack Nicholson 
and why he doesn't do movie stuff anymore. It's not that people don't want him in movies or whatever. And he says he just really enjoys sitting under a tree and reading a book. Yuck. Oh. <laughs> Your <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, yeah but, but he is 80. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so that's probably exactly. what he's yeah. able to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he's like, you know, I, I want to eat the food I want to eat. I just want to like, I, I think it it's just like, like it, I'm sure. yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. You could tell he's getting some really good yeah, food. Yeah, exactly. He yeah. ate the tree. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, do, I mean, do you do you mind if I if I ask about the uh, the the health struggle that you have? Because yeah, yeah. I think it's just such a relatable thing for so many people. I mean, um, you, and you've been you've been very open about it. I just don't know which, if you're, which one. I just don't know if you're uh, just really you know tired of talking about no, it. No, but no, I mean, no. uh, so many people go through these you know these health crises. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, back in September, you were in the hospital for pneumonia, and then. Um, there was also like something with your kidneys, like you collapsed, mm -hmm. right? Like, so like what, what all was going on? Was this triggered by, um, you know, just your, your lifestyle thing or like well, what has changed? I know like you've, you've, you've gone sober. So like, yeah, yeah. and that's all together. So there's no weed, no drinking no. of any kind no. and then a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. So just in general, like, so what are, what other kind of things like, where were you, what was going on? And you know, how did you get to this uh, point where you're at now? Cause again, you, you look awesome, man. You look very <laughs> ha happy, mm -hmm. healthy. You're looking good. Cool. Thank you. Well, I mean, those are two separate health things. I mean, back in 2014, you know, I, I had liver and kidney failure from just alcohol, you know, from drinking too much for too long. Mm. Um, and that was a long, I mean, that was pretty serious. Um, yeah. I was in the hospital for a, quite a while. Yeah, I remember took, reading stuff about that at that time. Yeah, and that took a long time for, to recover from that. It took about a year and a half um, once I got out of the hospital right. before I could kind of get back out and play on stage again. And I didn't actually think I was ever going to get back out and play on stage. Um, once I got out of the hospital, I had so much, my body just went through so much. I had all these, this nerve damage in my feet and I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand for more than a couple minutes. And wow. that lasted almost a, a year. And oh I didn't God. know if I'd be able to be on stage ever again. And then over time, it just kind of got better and I was working on it. And, uh, you know, through physiotherapy and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's a long, much longer, right, yeah, a yeah. condensed version of the right, story. Right, right, right. But, um... And then recently, when I got pneumonia, I actually had COVID first that turned into pneumonia. Oh, and that's, okay. And I went to the hospital for that. Yeah, but like the uh, the healthier lifestyle thing, like were you able to, you know, like going through that and these things happening to your body, like was that like a, you just, you just stopped immediately? Was it one of those things like a wake-up call kind of thing? Yeah, when I was in the hospital um, in 2014, I knew, like I'd, when I went to the hospital, I barely remember it because I was drunk, you know, and I'd passed out. And wow. my, my Everything just shut down. And I was in a coma for about a week. So when I got out of the coma, I hadn't had any alcohol in my system for over a week at that point. Mm. And as soon as I came to, I was just like, oh, thank God. Like, I'm sort of done. I didn't have to go through all the withdrawals or, like, trying to quit. It was just gone out of my system. Right. So, when you wake up from a coma, like, I mean, do you realize that people have to say, dude, you were in a coma? Yeah, yeah, I had no idea. Mm. I yeah. didn't know oh, okay. what it was. Yeah, yeah. so like, cause, uh, you hear different stories, uh, like, different I could people. I hear you the whole time. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, you hear people no, saying, like, nothing. you could hear people really? talking yeah. to them or, right. you know, telling they're, they're reading mm -hmm. the news or yeah. whatever to them just to, right. you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the, what the point of that is, Keep I guess. Keep them company, I guess. Keep them company or, like, or you know. Just, just to be there. Yeah, so you don't, you don't remember anything. I, from, I, I uh, remember, like, I remember feeling really awful and then kind of collapsing. And I remember, like... He's saying, I think I got to go to the hospital. I don't really remember much after that. But the coma, being the, in the coma, wow. you don't remember like uh, like hearing any now, like no, afterwards. No. You didn't, you didn't see anything. There's no you didn't light. dream anything. No, no light. No, no, no. <laughs> just darkness. Yeah, 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 silence. Yeah. Now, Greg and I, we had this great idea. Yeah, it's called coma size. Coma size for fat people like me. Yeah, because we're overweight and we would like right. to be put into a coma, and then they can let wake us up when we, when hit, we hit our, our goal, goal weight. weight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What do you yeah. think of that idea? As someone who's been <laughs> in a coma, would you recommend it? Will you back us? Yeah. I, we, we need investors. <laughs> <laughs> Can we say that you tried coma size? Because yeah, right. you, again, like you're always, you've always been like a, like a skinny uh, in shape guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I think I'm done with comas. Okay. All, right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I, I, well, didn't, I didn't know if maybe we could out. talk you, uh, yeah, talk you into that. Uh, all right. So I have a couple, are they true questions? You know, it's no. like uh, you read stuff, you hear stuff. Sure. Uh, is it true that your biggest regret is finishing high school? You'll, you're, <laughs> no. you're, you'll hear people say like, uh, my biggest regret is I didn't finish high school or I didn't go to college. Uh, not necessarily. I, I mean, I knew really early on that I didn't, I wasn't going to use high school, anything that I was learning right. in high school. I knew I wanted to be in a band. Like I said, I was in some yep. 41 back then. Um, but I don't regret going through it. Um, 
it made my mom happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was really the only reason I stayed. And nobody was that, like forcing you about college or trying to get you to go to college. My mom or, wanted me to. Yeah. I mean, my mom struggled a lot because yeah. she dropped out of high, uh, high school when she had me. Mm. And she had to go back when right. she was like 27, 28, yep. and then go to college. And it, it, was, so it, was, it was hard for her. So she really wanted me to go. And, but by the time I was getting out of high school, we already had interest from labels. Like it was already looking like we yeah. were going to get signed. So, mm. um, is it true, Ravi? You might not like this. Okay. Is it true that you used to be a clown? Oh, yeah. Uh, I had a job as a clown when I was thirteen. Uh, <laughs> so on the That's scary. It, it was yeah. Was so it like, a terrifying clown? No, it was a really embarrassing clown. It's like um, a flower shop or something, right? Yeah, it was a flower right? shop. He had to hold a sign that said oh "Roses nine ninety nine out on the street. <laughs> Wow. Did you have to spin the sign? And I did, yeah. That was oh, wow. the sign yeah. spinner guys. Yeah. That's Some awesome. of those guys are really good. I was not yeah. that good. Super I was 13 good. years old. Yeah. Yeah. I used to sign but you're and a performer. play guitar with yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what other jobs did you have before you, uh, I mean, you were 15 when you had the band, but I mean, before you could do the band full time. Uh, I worked at a gas station mm-hmm. um, in like the little kiosk. Right. Um, I did all the typical things. You know, I had a paper route. Did you ever work mm, at yeah. McDonald's? No. Okay, mm-hmm. we just had something the other day about one in eight people have worked have there. at some point worked at, at a McDonald's. I was thinking about it, and my mom said, "No, you can get a better job somewhere else. Do yeah. something else." She just didn't want me to do it. You can tell my mom's boy at this point, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> hey, same thing. You know what? You, you tell that story about your mom, and I, I have so much respect for single mothers. You know, just based on my own experience, mm-hmm. my mom, young mom, had me when you know she was just turning eighteen, mm-hmm. and uh, you know. Single for a long time, going through school, working full time, going to school full time. Yeah. And so I got a lot of that thing, same yeah. kind of conversation about like, even though I knew radio is what I wanted to do, yeah, um, about like how you had to go to college. And I think, you know, we all want that as uh, as parents. I can tell you, like, I sit there, my kids are 14, 11, like you, you want for them. Yeah. You want them to be independent. Let's start there. And then obviously to be successful and happy and that whole thing. So if you've gone through that struggle and uh, just because I didn't know it, I didn't like, I know that we didn't. Like we weren't living in a mansion or anything, but mm-hmm. like I, like I didn't realize just how poor we were. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and so you I have a ton of respect. Older, you start, yeah, so you start I hitting know. those ages that yeah. your mom was. So I don't even know your mom, but I love your mom. <laughs> yeah, uh, you performed at uh, the When We Were Young Festival last month. Um, what was the? Uh, I mean, was it cool? Because every every artist is there. Yeah, every artist from that you know from for the heyday of of some 41 like mm-hmm. really the uh the, the pinnacle the peak or whatever of uh you know all that like was there um was there any kind of like reunion that happened there it felt like a big family reunion i mean we didn't really get was there like s- one band or whatever that you just hadn't seen in 10 years or um i mean we're really good friends with a lot of those bands but it was great yeah. to see good charlotte you know we've we started really early with those guys yeah and same with bowling for soup and they're and, still great man mm-hmm. like good charlotte was great yeah, I mean, we didn't get to see anybody perform really. Yeah. Um, but we saw everybody, you know, backstage. I got to see you perform, and you did a good job. Oh, cool! Oh, <laughs> <Thanks. Wow. laughs> you, heard it, you heard it from yeah. Menace. You did a good really job. Good. It was really, really <laughs> Way good. Way to go! <laughs> it was a, re- a great B plus. <laughs> no, <laughs> you nailed it. It was good. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so do we know uh, any? I mean, I, they keep saying early next year for the album. Do you have a date? There's no date yet. No um, date yet. When? Like, what determines that? Yeah. If I've it's always in the wondered. Bag, like, why not just? Like the, the album's ready, right? That, that's a record company thing. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I did my part. It's finished. I yeah, it. right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's called uh, it's called Heaven and Hell. Release date to be determined. Tour forthcoming. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we talked about uh, mm-hmm. a couple little things here, like uh, when we were young, and of course the uh, the big show that uh, we're involved with, Alter Ego, Sum Forty One on that bill, along with Paramore, the 1975 Black Keys, Thirty Seconds to Mars, and Bush and Yellow Card. Lovely, the band, the last dinner party, and uh, we we thank you again for uh, for doing that, and uh, appreciate you uh, coming in. Good luck with your retirement. Yeah, from yes. some forty one. Keep luck. in touch. Let us know what you're doing. Yeah, cool. dude. Yeah, I, there, sure. There's something honestly. There's something really exciting about that. I mean, I know you know, it, it's not a situation where it's like, man, I got to find something next, or I'm not going to eat, or I'm not going to yeah. keep a roof over my head. So you're in a very fortunate, very blessed situation that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just to have that whole world opened up to you where you can really just kind of see where the wind takes you. Yeah, like, and maybe it takes me nowhere. I have no idea. Right, I'll and, never then, know. And, and you know what? And that would be fine. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you'll be under the tree with uh, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yeah, reading books. Yeah, yeah books. being all boring and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. But Derek, thank you so much for coming by. Cool, we'll thanks, see Andrew. you with Alter Ego. Yeah. Derek Wibley from Sum 41, everybody. Yeah. Got some more Woody Show coming up for you next. Hang on.